What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. In this video, we'll be taking a look at one of the only discrete GPUs you can still actually buy for MSRP, the GT1030. Now, just because you might be able to buy one of these cards doesn't mean you should. Now, I see two reasons on why someone might buy this card. The first is you might actually be able to buy this at MSRP and use it in the short term or at least until things get a little bit better. But from the sounds of it, that still might be a while. The second reason is that you want something that is low powered and silent that can still actually play something for your home theater PC or whatever other reason you might have. Now I do fall into this second group. I specifically got this ASUS model because of its low power consumption and its passive cooler. Now, as far as I can tell, this version or this cooler doesn't really affect the gaming performance in any meaningful way. Now, what meaningful means is two to three fewer FPS. So it's not like it's really gonna make an unplayable game playable by going with the passive cooler. Now, the big thing you do need to look out for if you wanna buy a GT 1030 is NVIDIA in all their wisdom and assholery release two different spec cards with the same name. So you wanna make sure you get the GDDR5 version because the GDDR4 version is like 50% of the performance of the GDDR5 version. So it actually is a really big difference. Now I'm gonna quickly go over the specs of this card. There are 384 CUDA cores. There is two gigs of GDDR5. That GDDR5 is running at 6,008 megahertz. Now for the clock speeds, the default game mode uh, has a boost of 1468 and the base is supposed to be at 1228. Now there's an OC mode. So in OC mode, the boost clock is supposed to go up to 1506 and the base clock is supposed to be at 1266. Now I have done my own temperature and frequency testings that I'll go over later in the video. Now there are two inputs on this card. There's an HDMI, which is a 2.0B and a DVI. Sadly, there is no Crossfire support because that could just be some stupid fun. Now, GPU Tweak does support this card, so that means overclocking is possible. They recommend a 300 watt power supply, and this passive cooler is a two slot cooler just because of the sheer depth of the heatsink. Now, one slot cards are a thing, but I believe all of them have fans. Okay, on to the testing. The CPU I'll be using, or the CPU I use is the Ryzen 5 3600, overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores. The motherboard is the MSI B550 Tomahawk. The CPU cooler was the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. The GPU again is this GT1030 with a passive cooler. The OS drive was a 250 gig SATA 3 M.2. The game drive is a two terabyte hard drive. The power supply is the Corsair RM550X. And for the RAM, I had four eight gig DIMMs of G-Skill Flare X at 3200. Now I did have an Arctic F12 PWM blowing over top of the GPU for all the game testing. The fan was spinning at plus minus 450 RPM, so it was spinning pretty slowly. I tested seven games at 1080p and I did focus on esports and battle royale games, mainly because I think that's the intent of this card, is more so that esports type thing. Okay, starting with Apex Legends, I have the settings on the screen there, so everything's pretty much set to low, and I used the training grounds as my test area, so I wasn't actually in game. The average FPS was at 41.5, with the 1% lows at 31.1. Now this didn't look all that great, but it is at 1080p, so if you would prefer, you could turn it down to 720p and probably get a little bit more FPS with actually pushing up some of the settings as well. Now what surprised me were the consistent frame times here. They actually were very playable. Now this wasn't an amazing experience, but it was definitely playable. The next game I tested was CSGO. Again, this is at 1080p with pretty much everything set to high. The test I ran was on Dust2 with bots and the average FPS was 92.3, with the 1% lows at 69.4. Now I understand these weren't super high frame rates, but it is definitely playable. The next game I tested was GTA 5. Again, this is at 1080p with most everything set to normal. 
Uh, the test area was with uh, Franklin and Lamar repo mission, that very first mission once you get to San Andreas. The average FPS was 95.2, with the 1% lows going down to 74.8. Now again, this didn't look great, but again, it was at 1080p. And with those frame rates, you could still keep it at 1080p and up the settings. Just as long as you keep your 1% in around 50, you're pretty good to go. The next game I tested was Rainbow Six Siege with everything set to low, but the render scale was at 100%, so this is 1080p. Now I did only test in the training grounds as Lone Wolf. This is just me playing with myself. The average FPS was 53.1, with the 1% lows dropping to 40.2. Now again, this didn't look great, but again, it is at 1080p, so if you prefer, you could drop it down to 720 and put up some of the settings. The frame times were actually quite consistent. It felt pretty good playing. Now again, the experience wasn't amazing, but it was definitely playable. The next game I tested was Rocket League. I tested at, again, 1080p at most everything set to quality. I had a practice game in the Soccer 4v4 with bots. I seemed to like to play with myself a lot. I did. The average FPS was 124.5, with the 1% lows dropping a fair bit here to 52.6. With the settings set to quality, it didn't look great, but with these frame rates, you could probably put some of the settings up to high quality and it would still be completely playable. The next game I tested was StarCraft 2, and I had all the graphical settings set to low. The testing area I used was just a 434 map versus AI, or with AI. All the testing was taken mid to late game, so this is actually when everybody has an army and things are going on. The average FPS was 111.9, with the 1% lows dropping down to 48.6. Now again, this didn't look great and the frame timings were pretty shoddy, but it was playable. Now Warzone, this is where things get not good. At 1080p with everything set to low or disabled, I had the test done in the practice mode of Battle Royale and it didn't work out so well. The average FPS was 22.9 with the 1% lows at 18.1. It looked bad, it ran bad, and it made me sick. Now, the reason it looks so bad is because Warzone needs more than two gigs of VRAM. It needs actually 2.3 gigs of VRAM. So yeah. Okay, now onto my frequency testing. Now, what I did was I just ran Heaven in a loop for 20 minutes, and the test with the fan blowing over top of the GPU had the frequency in between 1690 and 1630 megahertz. And when I had no fan blowing over top of the GPU, it ended up running in between 1590 and 1530. So there was around 100 megahertz difference. So as you can see in my testing, even with no fan, the clock speeds were still higher than the rated OC boost clocks of 1506. So that is really nice to see. Now for temperature testing, with the fan just spinning very slowly over top of the GPU, the hotspot was at 74 Celsius. And when I was running the GPU completely passively with no air blowing over it whatsoever, the hotspot got up to 89 Celsius. So there was a 15 Celsius difference by just having a very slow spinning fan blowing over top of the card. So if you do get one of these passive cards, try your best to just get some sort of airflow over it. It will help it out a lot. Now, as I said earlier, this card can be overclocked. So I tried overclocking it to see how much more headroom was actually in it. And I was able to get a plus 250 to the core and plus 400 to the memory. So taking a look at the frequency chart, again, looking at the stock results, it ended up being between 1690 and 1630 with the fan blowing over top of it. And being overclocked, that actually went up to in between 1900 and 1820. So I was able to get about a 200 megahertz boost to the clock. Now taking a look at the temperature testing, the OC was actually one Celsius lower, but I think that has more to do with the room temperature or something, because it really should be pretty much the same. It shouldn't be lower, it definitely shouldn't be lower, so it should be the same. One Celsius is still within the margin of error, so. So overclocking didn't really change the temperature when you have the fan blowing over top of the GPU. 
Now, once I finished the temperature and frequency testing of the overclock, I went back and retested all the games with the overclock settings. Now, the average FPS for Apex Legends went up to 44.2, and the 1% lows went up to 33.9. So there was a three FPS boost to both the 1% lows and average. CSGO actually got the average FPS above 100 to 103.8, and the 1% lows went up a fair bit as well to 77.1. GTA 5 had the average FPS again jump up over 100 to 105.3 with the 1% lows at 83.6. So again, you can definitely up the settings here and still have a fantastic experience in GTA 5. In Rainbow Six Siege, the average FPS actually got up over 60 FPS to 61.5 with a decent 1% low boost to 47.5. In Rocket League, we had a pretty big jump in the average FPS. It went up to 145.6, and the 1% lows actually had a pretty good boost as well to 65.2. With a frame rate like that, going up to high quality is probably a good option. Now for StarCraft, nothing really changed. Um, I'm assuming this has to do with that I'm using a Ryzen processor, because StarCraft doesn't really like Ryzen CPUs all that much. So there might be some sort of bottleneck with the CPU more so than the GPU. Now for Warzone, I was hoping this would help out Warzone a little, but it didn't. Um, the average FPS actually went down a little bit and the 1% lows again went down a little bit. Um, I even tried playing Warzone at 720p and did help. The average FPS went up to 32.4 with the 1% lows being at 24.4, but that's still not playable so the card doesn't have enough vram so there's really not much you can actually do here so what do i think of the gt 1030 if you are somebody building or wanting to build a silent home theater pc or someone like myself that just wants something that can run silently or passively and you can actually find this for msrp this card could make a lot of sense for you now, if you're someone looking for some kind of video card or any kind of video card to use while things are so shit-tastic in the world, it really comes down to what games you play or at least want to play. Because the weakest part of this card is by far that it only has 2 gigs of VRAM. Because if you're looking to play games like Rocket League or Minecraft that require around 1 gig of VRAM or maybe even a little bit less, this graphics card will run them well enough to have some fun. But if the games that you play or want to play require more than 2 gigs of VRAM, just make sure you have a bucket ready for when the motion sickness kicks in, because it's going to be bad. And finally, please, I beg you, please do not pay a scalper more than MSRP, or do not pay more than MSRP for these cards. They're not worth it. And to add to that, if you do get one of these passive GT 1030s, or anything passive for that matter, just try to point some sort of fan at it. It helps a lot. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter, at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching, and see you next time.